are joined by a man who I first met when I was in the Medill <laughs> School of Journalism graduate program, Rod. And for my final project, I did a piece on why was Northwestern sports not as good as, let's say, Duke or Stanford sports when they have the same, uh, I guess, academic standards. Right. And they're in the Big Ten. Northwestern's in the Big Ten. Why weren't they so, so great? And I turned to uh, none other than our next guest, who could not have been kinder to sit down for an interview with a graduate student. That's Rick Tallender, who joins yeah. me here on the How Rich Eisen Show. Nice right. to see you. Great to see you guys. Great to see you guys. You were so that, cool to do that, Rick. To what? To, to help you yeah. back when you were a student? Yes. You know, what I, one thing I learned, you got to help those people that seem like they're nothings, those little stepping stones, because someday they're going to be big <laughs> shots. <laughs> and I found that out, and so anyway, Rich, I just knew it was going to happen. Yeah, you're a good this man. This guy, was, it was a known quantity, so that, that was... And Rod, well, Rod was a Hall yeah. of Famer when I was even going through all of that stuff at uh, the Medill School of Journalism. Uh, and your, your book, Like a Rose, Life yeah. Lessons from a Training Camp with Hank Stram and the Camp. Kansas City Chiefs. I'm holding up a copy for the uh, television audience, for the radio audience. You should go and uh, go to Amazon.com or any bookstore and find it. Uh, Rick Tellender, Chicago Sun-Times columnist since 1995, longtime Sports Illustrated writer, mm -hmm. and an eighth-round pick of the Chiefs back in 1971. Yeah, they, he went all the way down to 17 rounds back then. I don't know who you <laughs> picked at 17, <laughs> but that was back when Mr. Irrelevant truly was irrelevant. Now, right. if they still do that, that guy might not be a bad player. So, uh, I guess, give me, give me a good memory for from, uh, from being with Hank Oh, man, well, when I day. went to the Chiefs camp, um, they had won the Super Bowl a year and a half earlier. They had guys like Lenny Dawson, Buck Buchanan, uh, Curly Culp, uh, Willie Lanier, uh, Otis, I mean, uh, Jan Stenerud. I mean, it went on and on, and Gerald Wilson. These guys were all amazing people that I'd heard about. Uh, Emmett Thomas, Jim Marcellus in the backfield. Um, and so I was a defensive back, and these guys would mess with me a little bit, you know, which is kind of funny. Uh, but I remember Willie Mitchell was terrified of snakes. Now, that's not too uncommon, you know. Sure. And one day he was I'm in the training room. I mean, I, I'm not nuts <laughs> about him myself, but in the training room at uh, William Jewell College, and somebody got, had a big fake rubber snake mm -hmm. and it brought it in and Willie was on the train table and he went out through the window. There <laughs> wasn't a screen on it. Didn't need one. So he didn't go through the glass. It just boom, gone. And I don't know if he ever came back. He must have come back. <laughs> but I remember that pretty well. I remember Hank Stram's toupee, which I hadn't seen many toupees at the time. And uh, <laughs> It, that was interesting. <laughs> but, you know, it was... That Hank sounds like was, a great name of a fantasy team, Hank Strand's <laughs> toupee, by the way. You've got to be a good that avatar. That would be a good one. That would be a good one, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rick Tallender of the Chicago Sun-Times right here on the, on the Rich Eisen Show. So, okay, let's, let's get right into it. Uh, is, is Mark Tressman playing for his job, do you believe? Whew, you know, the Bears job? don't fire coaches early. Uh, I, I don't think we have a real good sense of Mark Trussman yet, it, it, believe it or not, after all this time, um, because he seemed like the perfect guy for this for this offense, for Jay Cutler, for everything. He was the very, post Lovey era here, yeah, where was a very people calm wanted influence. to open it up. Yeah, and uh, you know maybe the offense would get going. Lovey was a defensive guy, so it didn't happen. And this is a huge game. I mean, it, it seems like there have been a lot of big games. That one last week uh, on Thursday against the Lions, where they didn't play very well, people said, okay, that they have a microscopic chance of making the playoffs at five and seven. I, I suppose they could get nine and seven and somehow get in. But I don't know want to say it's for his job, but it's certainly for his credence, you know, here in town. And, and it's, it's a sad thing if it doesn't work out because he's, a, everybody said, a very likable guy. We all like Mark Trussman. But defensively, Rod, is that where is that where you would pin the, the troubles of this team, even though Tressman's the offensive guru that's supposed to have all these weapons at Jay Cutler's disposal working on all cylinders? Well, that would be my question for you. If mm -hmm. if it's not for Mark's job, if and I hate hearing firing coaches, I, I know what that feels like, but Mel Tucker, mm -hmm. they've struggled since he's yeah. been here. They've given up 28 points a game last year. They're giving up 21.8 points a game this year. Mm -hmm. If he lets Mel go and brings in a new D coordinator, would that give him, would that be a common well, effect in Chicago? Yeah, people have been calling for Tucker's head here yeah, for right. a few and, weeks, and right? Yeah, right, and he's lucky he made it out of, burgers. out of last year where the, the Bears were so bad on defense. They're much better against the run, which is interesting. DeMarco Murray is going to be a real test for them tonight. But you're right, Rod, if, if you have to give the crowd something, you know, you got to offer up that body or that sacrifice, it would be Mel Tucker. Um, but, you know, it was Mark Trussman, uh, I, we have to believe, who wanted to rehire him. Uh, they've had a lot of injuries. Their secondary is very bad. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they thought that 
the, the defensive line would have been better this year, but you see Julius Peppers go to Green Bay and play so well. So that hurts too. That, that hurts where you got rid of somebody, maybe they had to, but he goes and plays better for your in-division rival that uh, the Packers just own the Bears. Now. I'm here with Rick Tellender of the Chicago Sun-Times on the Rich Eisen Show. We're outside here in the, uh, the winter chill of uh, Soldier Field. Where, where, what do the Bears fans feel about Jay Cutler? Can you sum that up for me? Where, where, what uh, his? They're, they're kind of brokenhearted. They, you know, as he has matured, he's become a better person. Just a person since he's been in Chicago, got married, has two kids. But he hasn't become a better quarterback. And now what they believe is the, these turnovers and these bad decisions that he'll make only a few in a game, but they're enough to destroy whatever momentum is there. So, you know, starting to call him a coach killer, starting to say, you know, why did you spend all this money, Phil Emery, to sign him, to make him the franchise quarterback that he is. Uh, but it's been said it's hard to find a good quarterback. There aren't enough for all 32 teams. And, you know, so they're stuck with him. But, Rick, you look at, yeah, he does have all the qualities of being an outstanding quarterback. Yes. But you have a running back in Matt Forte, who's one of the better all-around running backs in the National Football League. And they seem like they just don't use him enough in games and take well, that pressure off. they throw it to him as opposed to running it as much with him. Certainly on Thanksgiving, they would, the, the defense would sue. They don't want to keep banging their head up against Sue the, all day. But throwing this they use him more than than that than running well here. He, he's such a, a an elusive runner he really has this ability to slip tackles it's beautiful to see he'll do it tonight long strider uh, yeah long strider but he doesn't get hurt he's been durable and uh, the Bears did not run the ball hardly at all in the last game and so people in Chicago are demanding the run I don't think it's the run so much as get the ball into Matt Forte's hand. So However yeah. you got to do it, a, uh, you know, a shovel pass, um, just, just any way you can because he is such a threat. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.